We'll start by wiring the mono phone plug that you'll connect to your MP3 player or other audio source. First, unscrew the threaded housing from the plug and set it aside. Solder a length of red stranded wire to the center tip contact and another length of black stranded wire to the outer shield contact. Use pliers to crimp the wires in place, then tighten the housing back on. Next, we'll form the coil. Strip about 10 centimeters of 18 gauge solid copper wire and wind four turns around the threads of a quarter 20 bolt. Turn the coiled wire off the bolt as if you're unthreading a nut and clip each lead as shown. Bend little feet on the ends of the leads and adjust them so the coil will stand upright. Holding a pair of pliers in each hand, grab the coil's leads and stretch it evenly along its length until the feet are 12 millimeters apart on center. You may need to even out the coil spacing just a bit with a screwdriver or other tool. Now for the circuit board. Use a straight edge, a utility knife, and the edge of a table to score and snap a five by four centimeter rectangle from the copper clad board. This will be your ground plane. Next, score and snap five small pads. These will be glued to the board to create mounting points for component leads which are not connected to the ground plane. We'll start building the circuit by mounting the coil. Apply a small drop of glue to the underside of one of the pads. Use tweezers or small pliers to carefully position it near the center of the ground plane. Now glue a second pad to the board as shown. These two pads should be 12 millimeters apart to match the coil. Now you can solder the coil across these two pads. It's easiest if you pre-tin the surface of the pads and both feet of the coil before making the connections. Begin with a .01 microfarad capacitor then another pad, the 27 kilo ohm resistor, the fourth pad, the electrolytic capacitor. Remember that electrolytic capacitors are polarized, so make sure you've got this one turned the right way. A 10 kilo ohm resistor, and another 0.01 capacitor. And then the final pad. Now it's time to add the transistor. Bend the leads as shown, and then solder the transistor body in place, connecting the collector to the coil, the base to the resistors, and the emitter to the free pad. Now solder one 10 picofarad ceramic disc capacitor across the transistor's collector and emitter, and a 470 ohm resistor between its emitter and ground. Finally, solder a second 10 picofarad ceramic disc capacitor between the coil and the ground plane as shown. Now we just have to add the battery clip and the phone plug. Solder both black wires to the ground plane, the red battery clip lead to the end of the coil with the resistor, and the red phone plug lead to the negative side of the electrolytic capacitor. Now all that's left to do is power up the circuit by connecting a 9 volt battery and an audio source, like an MP3 player or a smartphone. Start playing a song or other easily recognizable audio track. Then turn on your FM radio and scan through the bands to locate the transmission. If you can't locate your signal at first, try changing the orientation of your receiver's antenna with respect to the board and scan for it again. To make your transmitter more portable, you can attach the 9-volt battery to the back of the circuit board with some Velcro or double-sided tape. Depending on your equipment and the broadcast spectrum in your area, you should be able to receive transmissions up to 30 feet away. It is possible to boost that distance by adding an antenna, but remember that in most countries you are supposed to have a license to operate an FM transmitter. Be considerate of others and remember that unlicensed broadcasters can get in legal trouble if they interfere with normal public use of the radio spectrum. Finally, 